So many are on the verge of falling out of Jesus. The trials of this life shake the roots so that you are not even able to stand. Jesus says, stand therefore and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I pray that you are happy in the Lord Jesus today and that he is your anchor, that he is your life. And no matter what darts the enemy throws your way today or tomorrow, it will not shake you out of the Lord Jesus. What an awesome God we serve. And Satan's dart could not shake him. Amen. He went to that cross after the burden was so heavy. But he got up on that cross anyway. Amen. When he saw us. And I'm so thankful when he saw me. And he says, I got to get up on that cross. Because if not, Marlena cannot be saved. I hope that you have that same joy that God has done it all just for you. Amen. Just for you. I tell you, we serve a good God. I mean, a good God. I mean, he is good. In the midst of trials, God is good. When you're sad, he is good. Let me tell you why I know he's good. I would have lost my mind. Amen. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been through some tough times where the enemy tried to take me out. But glory be to God who had his hand on my life. And when the enemy tried, he says, not my daughter know about you some of you might have had rosy times but I want you to know some thorns on that rose amen and if Satan hadn't gotten you yet he surely he surely will amen but I have learned that through my trials God gets gooder and gooder sweeter and sweeter and I'm able to go through that's right gooder than gooder see young folk don't know nothing about that right they think I'm just using bad English. <laughs> amen, amen. So we've been having a time of stewardship, learning how important it is to give everything uh, that belongs to us to Jesus first. Amen. Giving it to Jesus first, trusting that he will always be God, that he is the owner of all things, and he just loans us and allows us to be stewards to manage that that he gives us. For the past two Sabbaths, we've been studying on stewardship of the treasury, and today we're going to study stewardship of time. Amen. Our time is a gift from God. Our time that we say, oh, I'm so busy. Our time comes from God. Turn with me to Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 21. Ephesians 5, 15 through 21. Amen. We're going to take it to the Lord in prayer first. God, what an awesome God you are. We're so thankful for your visitation. God, you said where two or three are gathered, you would be in the midst. God, we invite you into this place. We don't want to do anything without your presence. We don't want to sing. We don't want to preach. We don't want to teach or anything, God, without your spirit. Let your spirit hover over this congregation. We pray that hearts would be melted and that hardened hearts would be softened. God, we pray that minds would be transformed and that, that ideas will come into our minds. God, that we will surrender our all to you and allow you to to be Lord and Savior of our lives. So God, speak through me in a mighty way. Let not the people hear me or see me, but God, we want to hear from you. You are our God. You are the true and living word. Your word is truth, and God, we want to hear from you. So speak, Lord, and our servants, us as servants, we will hear. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm reading from the New King James. If you can follow with me, walk in wisdom is the title of this pericope. And it says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in, wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. We've been 
fasting and praying for 10 days to be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms. That's encouraging one another. And hymns and spiritual songs like we just sang. Singing and making melody in your heart. Do you feel good in your heart today after making melodies in your heart? Giving thanks always. When did I say? Always for Things, I'm sorry, for all the things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. That is the whole section of the pericope there. Pericope is just a certain uh, um, study, a format that goes along with the same theme. And with that in mind, we're going to focus on verses 15 through 17 today. 15 through 17. There's a story. I shared it a little bit on um, Wednesday. Actually, I shared it in its entirety on Wednesday night. I pray that you will come out on Wednesday night as God is leading us to do great things and to grow us as a family in God. Amen. Learning how to pray together and how to study together and how to transform our homes. Amen. Making them uh, wonderful heavens on earth. There was a pastor who was the pastor of a new church district, and it was a very small district. And he and his wife were so eager for their ministry to grow, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they watched God do some amazing things. God was so faithful that the numbers of the saints increased, and the church grew so mightily that they had to build a new church. Well, one night, the pastor had to go to a meeting, and as he was going to the meeting, the children in the house started to cry, and they said, Daddy, don't go. You never play with us anymore. And, and the father looking at the children, thinking they're about to break his heart, and they're, they're holding him, and, and they're all around his neck, and he's trying to pry them off because he didn't want to be late for the meeting. And so he's saying goodbye to his children and his children are crying. He says, listen, I'm going to make it up to you. But he knew that his making up uh, activities didn't come that often. And so the children here were breaking his heart. But he felt that he had to be at this meeting because he promised the church that he would be there. And so as he goes across and it was in the snowy weather and he's walking across the snow, he feels this cold chill comes over his body, the chill that is similar to that that he's feeling in his heart because he knows that his children are breaking his heart. And as he is walking across, he hears this voice. The same voice that he had heard many times when he was praying and when he was studying God's word and at any inopportune time, he would hear this voice. And the voice said to him, when I come again, I will not ask you first about the new church building you're building or how many people you visited helped or baptized I will not ask you that first but the first thing that I will ask you is where is your wife and where are your children as he walked he thought well me and my wife were close and Walking together, and God, I know my wife will be with me. But he thought about his children. And he says, you know, I don't even know. Will my children be with me, or will they not? The father, who was so busy in other things, but he didn't have time for his children. He didn't have time to spend and nurture with his children. Time wasted. Time wasted. Because if you neglect your family, it is time wasted. He only had little time for his children, saving everybody else, but only little time for his children. That makes every last one of us pastors tremble because we must save our family members first. I remember growing up, my mom always saying to my dad, uh, honey, spend time with your son. Spend time with your son. He needs a father. You know, the parents, you understand, your wife saying, spend time with your son because a son needs a father. Amen. 
Amen. Sonny's a father. And I remember often this conversation would come up because sometimes fathers seem or feel that they have to be out bringing in the money and they have little time for their children. There's a quote from Rick Warren that says, time is your most precious gift because you only have a set amount of it. Charles Spurgeon, the great theologian, says, serve God by doing common actions in a heavenly spirit. And then if your calling only leaves you cracks and crevices of time, fill them up with holy service. What is time? Webster says time is the system of those sequential relations that an event has to any other as past, present, or future. Indefinite or continuous duration regarded as that in which events succeed one another. That's what Webster says time is. When I was studying and looking at an article, it says it was by the laying the foundation article. The Bible looks at time as a limited succession of days in which human experience of the world flows. So the Bible says time is limited. Human beings are allowed at their appointed span of time that the Lord gives. And always remember that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Ultimately, it is God who controls human time. We're talking about time this morning. God wants us to be stewards of our time. He has given us time as a gift. As we've learned in our Sabbath school lesson, a good steward is one who manages that that he does not own in excellence. That the God over the steward can trust him with these precious talents. I want to share with you this morning that your time is precious. Your time is precious. Your time is precious. In the text lesson... We see here Paul is written to the church of Ephesus, not instructing them on something that he heard they were doing incorrectly, but he's actually sending them a letter from prison because he wanted to encourage them, encouraging them in prayers and in praise to God and in how to behave towards one another. You see in chapter 5, as you go back to Ephesians chapter 5, we look at the first pericope and it says how we should walk in love. Being imitators of God. Amen. Walking in love. When you walk in love, people ought to see that the spirit of God lives inside of you. Amen. That's how you win people to Christ from your lifestyle. Amen. Not from the words that you say, but from the life that you live. Amen. Being imitators of Christ. The second pericope in that chapter says, walk in the light. For you too once walked in darkness, but now God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What is light? The light of Jesus Christ, his righteousness, his living. God has called you to walk in the light. Amen. If you are not walking in the light of Christ, it's because there is no light in you. How deep that is. And the third one we will focus on today is to walk in wisdom. God has called us to be wise. What is this wisdom? Walk in wisdom. Go with me to to verse 15. As we stay there a little bit longer, verse 15. And I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, be careful then how you live. Some verses say, how you walk. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Mm. You see, wisdom is living a life that is pleasing to God. Uh huh. Because wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The scripture says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when you have wisdom, you understand why you exist. Amen. When you have wisdom, you understand God's purpose for your life. 
when you have wisdom, you understand that you were created to worship God. You were created to obey God. You were created to be his witnesses. You see, God and, the, and, and the, Jesus and the Father planned this a long time ago and the Holy Spirit that after Adam and Eve sinned, that Jesus would come down to this world and die for our sins so that we would not have eternal damnation, but we would have the gift of eternal life. The gift of eternal life came as Jesus had to give his life up on the cross to take victory over death so that we would not die, but we would live. Amen. And if that was Jesus' mission, he says, I want you to carry this, this uh, min ministry and this mission throughout the whole world because I'm going back to the Father. And as I go to the Father, I want to give you power to spread my message. And as I give you power, I need each and every one of you. Therefore, you were created for a reason. Amen. And when you are wise, you understand that you're not here just to do your own thing. You're not here just to go to college. When you, you look at man's ways, which is considered unwise, we think we go to school, we go to college, you get married, you have children, and then you go to church from time to time because that's the good thing to do. But God says, I've created you to do something amazing for me. I want the world to see that I am the true and living God and that I love them and that I'm coming back for them because we are living in a time right now where people no longer want to hear about Jesus Christ. We're living in a time where churches are dying. You look around and people are not here. The pews are empty. If everyone came to this church who are members here, this, con this pew, this sanctuary would be filled. All the pews and back here and, and over in the overflow and everyone would be here. But yet and still people like to sit home. And watch the video of somebody preaching. And God's called us to come and worship together. And as the world see us getting along in here, they will know that there is a God by our unity with one another. So God has called us to live in wisdom. But the foolish, the foolish only desires the things that please themselves. The foolish. The foolish looks at their own desires, what they want. How they want to live their own lives absent from the will of God. So God is saying, my children walk in wisdom, not in foolishness. All right, the second point I want to point out is in verse 16. We stayed there, verse 16, and I'm reading still from the, the new Revised Standard Version. And it says, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Making the most of your time. What does that mean? Satan knows that we have but a short time on this earth. He knows that he has but a short time because, remember, he lived with the Father. He sees, he knows the scriptures. Satan knows the word of God. And so he says, oh my goodness, time is wrapping up right here. I've got to work a little bit harder. So Satan knows what time it is. So he causes us to be distracted with our daily lives. Time that was given to be a gift has now become a tyrant. Time. It has invaded our personal our social and our spiritual lives. Time that was once a gift, now it has become a burden. What do we see people, how you been, how you been? Girl, I've been busy. That's what we say. Well, how things going, man, just busy. Working, working, working. We can't even tell people how blessed we are, how God has done great things in our lives. We just talk about how busy we are in our schedules because time now has taken, overtaken our minds and it has no longer um, become a precious gift, but now a burden. What are some of these, these reasons for loss of time? Some of these reasons. Well, some reasons are because we are greed chasers. 
Greed chasers are people who have to work two and three jobs because they have to maintain their standard of living. Greed chasers often want this. You know, they ride the nice cars and they live in the big houses and, 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 and they go to all of these fancy exotic places and they say, I've got to make sure I maintain the lifestyle that I live so I work and I work and I work. And they use up all of their time. And let me be very clear that when you are in Christ, he will bless you. God will give you a nice house. Whether it's small or large, he will give you a nice house. Anybody understand what I'm saying in here today? God will bless you with reliable transportation. Amen. But you know that you can't afford to drive a Mercedes, so don't buy one. And you might say, I just got to use one. But when it's time to have the services done and the services cost $800 just to do something very minor and you look and you're struggling because you wanted the cars with all these little emblems on instead of driving you a nice Toyota that lives for a long time. Amen? So God is saying, some of you don't have time because you are greed chasers. When you're greedy and you're working all of this and, and you're neglecting the family, our children suffer. Which may be the reason why some of our children act out. Because they want the attention of their parents. Amen? So we must be mindful. Mindful not to chase greed. Amen? The next the next characteristics are entertainment seekers. Oh, help me in this place. Entertainment seekers. People are engaged in activities that consume all of their time. Oh, let's stay here for a little while. We're going to stay right here. Video games and, 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 and cell phones and other electronics. Social media and TV. Some people are so involved that they have no time for their families and they're getting in trouble because they are neglecting their family leading to marital unhappiness. I've had to counsel couples because there's somebody playing videos from the time he comes home till it's time to go to bed and he says, at least I'm home. I said, that is not satisfaction just because you're in the house. We need interaction. And you're neglecting your spouse playing videos. Then some of us have gotten in trouble being on social media. On social media, let me tell you, that can be a good thing, but the devil can use it for a negative thing as well. And you start getting the old people calling you back again. Old oh, girlfriends and boyfriends. And then you spending time with them. How you doing? Nice to hear from you. Get off that social media. You're playing with the devil. Now, I'm not telling you you can't go up there and connect with your family and your friends sometimes, but you have to be discreet in what you do. Listen, leave the old people behind. They can't be your friend. Do you understand me? An old girlfriend can't be your friend. An old boyfriend can't be your friend. Guess what? You're married. You're married. Married people don't live single lives anymore. When you're single, you talk to whomever you want to talk to. But when you're married, you got to guard this thing. And you got to protect it. Because, see, you don't understand the days are evil. When people would say, are you married? You say, yeah, I'm married. Then they say, but are you happy? Because if you're not happy, can I have your phone number? The sanctity of marriage is no longer holy in the eyes of the world. So God says right here through Peter that we must make the most of our time because the days are evil. So we're spending time on electronics and TV. Getting caught up in this world and we say, it's all right. And let me tell you, Satan know when we're foolish. You know, we're some foolish people. Can I say here, we're some foolish people. And I, I talk with spouse and they say, you know, my, my husband is a uh, little bit jealous, overprotective. Well, he should be. Do you know Jesus is overprotective of you? Do you understand that? That's 
That's why I said you should have no other gods before me. I'm a jealous God. Yes. God says, I'm going to protect my children from the hand of the enemy. And so every husband and every wife should protect the sanctity of their marriage. You ought to be happy that your spouse is jealous over you. Because if they weren't, you said, I walk by, they don't say anything. I'm in my best attire. How you looking? All right. Well, I bought this nice dress. How you think I look? All right. I got my hair done today. What does that look like? All right. You know, as a woman, we want to hear some compliments, don't we? We want to hear, honey, you sure look good. And then you say, I do. I look. Oh, thank you. You want to hear somebody give you a compliment from time to time. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh you do. <laughs> you want to hear some compliments, amen? Because let me tell you, if you don't give them, somebody else will. And when you're starred for compliments and somebody else give them to you, you're going to start being drawn to that person. You say, I like Brother Willie at work. He always telling me how good I look. Brother Willie always say, I smell good. That thing at home only says, you all right. Before you know it, Brother Willie has a little bit more attention than he should be getting. And the next characteristics that pulls our time away are people pleasers. Some of us are so busy because we're trying to please other people. You're trying to do everything somebody else wants you to do. Filling up your calendar without doing the things of God, but you're doing all the things of everybody else. Then we have ego makers. You're so important, your schedule is busy every day. You just work because you are so important and, 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 and you want prestige in your life that you don't have time to spend with family and friends. You don't have time for God. And then they're just poor time managers. I'm sure many of us are in this category. You're running all day because your children are in all kinds of activities. You work late. Then you get home. You got the house chores. You got to cook dinner. You got to wash the clothes. You got to clean the house. You got to wash the car. You got to cut the grass. You're busy. You're busy. You're busy. And there's no time. No time for God. And before you know it, it's 11 o'clock. And you say, I'm going to have a little prayer life. You say, God, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. <laughs> Y'all know. And, look, and you say, I can't pray kneeling over because if I pray while I'm kneeling, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> For you even say, Jesus, you sleep. <laughs> Time. Time is a precious gift. Paul says we should redeem the time. Redeem means you call back. You get your time back. You don't waste your time, but you see that there is an urgency. Paul says that we should look at our time and that there is an urgency because the days are evil. Do you understand why the days are evil? The days are evil because Satan is making sure that there are evil ideas out here. That there are immoral values and there are selfish motives that lead to destruction. That pull us away from the purposes of God. And these, these evil motives cause delusions and temptations that lead us away from God and his will for us. So you have no thoughts of coming to church because you're so busy. You have no desire to read your Bible because you are too busy. You have no time to pray because you are too busy. You have no time. To spend with your, your wife and your children because you're so busy. When was the last time you took your wife on a date? When was the last time? Some of y'all, we ain't been on a date in 20 years. I don't know. When the last time y'all just went out? You, you know, you can walk in the neighborhood, hold hands. Y'all still hold hands? Y'all not do that? Hold hands. Single people, you can just walk out and enjoy yourselves. Spend time with family. When was the last time you spent time with God one-on-one -on -one without being in a rush? I heard this analogy on TV, and it made, it made me think. We sit down and we say, God, I, 
God, I love you. I thank you so much. I thank you for doing this for me. I thank you for doing that. Lord, I, 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 you know, my, I'm low on my rent. I need you to help me with my rent. Oh, God, the car is breaking down. I need you to help me with the car. God, I got this ache in my back. I need you to help me with my back. God, I know you, are, you can answer prayer. God, you are mighty God. You can do anything I ask you. God, I thank you for answering my prayers. I thank you for being so good to me. Amen. If your children came to you and all they did was just ask you for stuff all the time, how would you feel? I know it gets on my nerve. Hey, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Good morning. How you doing? Oh, good morning. Hey, I saw this over there. Can you buy me this? That's exactly how we treat God. Do you know when you pray, you're supposed to stay there and let God speak back to you? Some of you say, I don't know how to hear from God. How do you hear from God? You hear from him as you spend time with him. Yes. And then in spending, you just wait. Say, God, I just want to meditate on your goodness. You're so good to me. God, whatever you tell me to do, I will do. I'm your servant. And you just spend time and let him speak back to you. And he will speak. And then you open up the word and you see how good the word is. Because God starts to speak to you. Through his word. Any help in here? Anybody understand what I'm saying? That God will speak to you. So Satan knows that these are the last days and the times are evil. And so he distracts us. And he keeps us from doing the will of God. He keeps us from praying. He keeps us busy so that we don't even have time to think about God. Psalms 39 verses 4 through 5 says, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire lifetime is just a moment to you. At best, it is only a breath. That's how short life is. That is how short life is. There used to be a cliche that says, here today and gone tomorrow. We know now is here today and gone today. Time is short. God says, I called you to be good stewards of the time. I've given you time as a blessing. I've given you time to spend with me, time to spend with your family, time to be wise. And not to be doing all of these other things that distract you from hearing my voice. Do you know some of us don't even know how to sit still anymore? Do you know that? Some of us can't sit still. And I said, well, why can't you just sit still? I don't know how to sit still. That's what I hear from my children. I said, well, can't you just, just, just sit there? I said, well, what's that? I have music in my head. Just in my head. <laughs> We can't even meditate anymore. We can't meditate. We can't rest. And these are our children. Because let me tell you, let me, let me tell you before I go any farther. We must take care of our children. Why do you let your children stay on the phone all day? Playing on electronics all day. And then when it's time to go to church, come on, go to church. Go to church. Go. Because they have no desire. Now it's only the things of electronics. So my boys got phones. Guess what they do? They have to check them in and check them out. They think I'm crazy. I said, no, 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 no. You ain't going to be on this phone all day long. Then I said, well, can you wash the dishes? What? So all I ask you to do is wash the dishes. Well, I gotta wash the dishes. Everybody in the house, everybody eat. Well, I gotta wash the dishes. I don't wanna do anything. But you get them on that phone. Stay all day. So I say to your parents, why do you do it? 
Why don't you guard your children? Why do you just let them over to the world? And you don't even know what they're doing half the time. I got my, my boy's phone so booby trapped. What am I saying? I can't even get to the public. What's that? The PBS. I can't even get into PBS. I said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, I got them booby trapped. There don't be no going in no wrong places. Listen, you, got to, you have to love your children so much that you guard what they watch, what they listen to, because the devil is after them. You don't understand the devil is after our children. And then you're going to pray for me, Pastor, my child. He won't listen to me. He won't do anything about pray for me. Well, what have you done to lead your children closer to God? Because when you stand before him, just like that pastor, he's going to say, where are your children? I gave them to you. Lord, now, Hot Harris um, wrote this song, and I love this song. And he says, I miss my time with you. It's Jesus talking to you. Listen, listen to the chorus. It says, I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day and it hurts me when you say you're too busy. Busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. That's Jesus talking to us. And we says, God, I'm busy for you. Well, how can you be so busy when you're empty? Because you don't spend time with God to be filled. And so you're empty. I'm so grateful that we serve a God who doesn't just tell us what's wrong, but he shows us how to get it right. Amen. He shows us how to get it right. And there are two easy ways I want to let you know how to spend more time with God today. Two reasons. Amen. How to spend more time with God. How to be good stewards of your time. How to make sure that God is first. Amen. The one thing, the first thing you need to do is pray for wisdom. Amen. Pray for wisdom and says, God, show me how to go forth in my day. You, you lead me, God. You guard my life. You show me what it is that you want me to do. Psalms 90 and verse 2, 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So what is that? Ask God daily to make your plans. Put God first. Put God first. Put God first. Amen. Put God first and then your family. Amen. It is not your neighbor or your co-worker, your friends or your job. God says, put me first. Stay with me, church. Stay with me. Put me first. Make time every day to spend with God. Bring your family together. We're going to talk about family worship. Because this is the year of the family as we come together and pray. Amen. Come together and pray together. So the first solution, God says, I want you to pray for wisdom. I will lead your day if you only call on my name. Amen. The second thing you need to do is focus on eternity. Amen. Know that this is not your home. And if you focus on eternity, you know that you only have a short time in this life. Because the days are evil. We must understand that time is winding up. God is coming. He is coming. Church, God is coming. It is not just a fairy tale. It is truth in his word. He is coming. And will you be ready? Do you think, oh, I've got plenty of time left. Focus on eternity. Focus on getting from this place to that place. Because when you focus on eternity, you know that you have only a short time. And you need to tell somebody else what a good God we serve. Why not start with your family? Amen. Start with your family. James 4, 13 and 14 says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes away. 
That's what this life is. And are you going to spend it all just working? Are you going to spend all of your time and doing all these other things and neglecting your family? And most importantly, neglecting God? Because you will have to stand before him and give an account of your time. Says you could have known about me if only you came to church. Could have known about me if only you opened the Bible that I put in your house. You could have known about me if only you stayed awake at church. You could have known about me if you had witnessed to somebody. You could have if you just took the time. He says, I sent you to a church. Where there was prayer, there was Bible study, and then there was a time of worship, but you were barely there. What are you doing with your time? I'm closing. In closing, I just want to say to you that time is a precious gift. And Satan is very strategic in making sure that we are so busy that we have no time for God. He is strategic making sure our minds are constantly filled up with things. That we're distracted with social media and TV and electronics and people. And we're so busy running errands and doing all these things. That we're so tired that we can't even spend time with God. Satan is strategic and understanding that if he keeps us distracted. That we will be distracted from the will of God. God is saying, my children, I want you to make time for me. Do good for me. I created you for a reason, to do good things for other people. And so I want you to be good stewards of your time. Little prayer, little power. Little Bible study, no understanding. Little church attendance, little relationship. Little faith, little experience. And we walk around as weak, frail Christians when God has called us to be strong. God says, I will be your strength. I will give you courage and I will make you strong. To withstand any wiles that the enemy brings your way. But yet and still we are frail and broken. Because we have no relationship. We don't take time for God. And it dwindles down to the family. And before you know it we're just workaholics. And we come home and we say I'm so tired. And, and then we have no time. And what happens to your family? The family unit degrades. Amen. Satan is strategic. And you only think you're tired but he's strategic. I want to tell you time is precious. God wants your time. Time is precious. Make time for the Lord in prayer. Time is precious. Walk with him daily. Time is precious. It's not having time, but making time. Amen? Who is time? God is time. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. I am the everlasting Father, I am time. I start it and there is no ending. I am the beginning and I never end. I am time. Use your time wisely. Be wise, not foolish. Let me have your time. Let me have your life. And I will guide you every day. I will make sure that you don't neglect me. You don't neglect your family. And you won't have to be without. I will make sure that you have plenty. And it will overflow. And overflow. And overflow. And overflow. Be good stewards of your time. I think that there are none of us in here who have not been guilty. 
I think that each and every one of us have been guilty in multiple ways. Jesus was talking to me all through this sermon. How I need to spend more time with my boys. Husbands, spend more time with your wife and your children. Wives, spend more time with your husband and your children. They are not an excuse. It is necessary. Single parents, spend time with your children. Single, spend time with your families. I've never seen where so many family members are passing now. Never seen a time like this before. Family members are leaving because the time is short. And you're going to look back. You're going to feel like if I only spent more time. You never realize what you're missing until you no longer have it. Time. Time. It's time to pray. And I know all of us are guilty. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let's, let's talk to God. God, we've neglected you. And you know it. You've been saying to us over and over, I miss my time with you. Those moments we used to spend together in prayer and study and just meditating on me. I miss that. I don't want just a part of you. I want all of you. God, we've been guilty. We've neglected our families. Families are broken. Families are fragile. God, we need you. God, we need you. God, we suffer in this church because we have people who don't have time. You've called us and created us to do ministries, but we haven't had time. God, we've been so busy. Busy doing things that have no effort in helping us make it into the kingdom of God. For your word says, what will it profit us if we gain all of this world and lose our souls? So what if we make it, if we have a job and we're able to pay our bills, but we miss the kingdom? God, from this moment on, we want to pray for wisdom. We want to know that the time is short and keep eternity in our view. And understand that it is time to go home. And we must use every minute, every second, every hour to the best of our abilities to serve you. Now God, we're guilty and we ask that you would forgive us right now. Forgive us, God. Forgive us. Help us, Jesus. God, when it's time for prayer meeting, I pray that this congregation is full. This sanctuary is full. But it's time for Sabbath school that we come before you and study that the house is full. Pray that we not find solace in home and, and all of these other places running here and there. God, I pray that we see the importance of building relationships in you. So God, wash us, wash us, oh God, wash us, make us clean. Keep your heads bowed as we continue. I will not miss this opportunity to invite someone to the wonderful, blessed kingdom of God. God wants to save us. God wants to save us. And he wants to use us in a very mighty way. 
He created us for service. He created us to be used for his glory. Is there one who says, Pastor, I want to give my life to God. I see why I was created. I see that God is calling me and he wants me to do something awesome for him. And I want to do it through this ministry. Is there one? We have three others right now waiting to be baptized. Is there another? Is there someone who says, God, I want to give you my life. You've been working on my heart. God, I want to do it in you right now. Is there another? Is there someone? Is there someone? Listen, God wants to move through you. He wants to use you. God wants to use you. I love where every time I give the altar call, the little children raise their hand. And God says, we should be as the little children. Is there one? As we continue to pray, God, we thank you for this time of worship. You've been so good to us, Lord. We thank you for who you are. God, we commit our lives to you. We commit our time to you. That it will be used for your glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Can the church say amen one more time? What a mighty God we serve. Shall we stand for the benediction?